Hey, class. Uh, now, with this podcast, um, we're going to move from the uh, various uh, Native groups that uh, populated the um, San Antonio missions, what we used to call the Colatecan, although now we know there were multiple, multiple Indian groups that occupied the missions, uh, to a, a bigger picture of Indians uh, diplomacy with the Spanish during the 1700s. And if you take a look at this map, and I'll post this map on Canvas, um, I keep saying Blackboard, but uh, Canvas is what we're gonna, what we live in the world, the much better world that we live in today. Um, two things I wanna point out, uh, well, three things. Okay, so here's basically the area uh, uh, of the um, multiple Indian native groups that went into the San Antonio missions. But what I really wanna turn to in this podcast are, is the big, bigger picture of the Comanche, uh, because the Comanche dominate North and West Texas from the 1720s until about the 1870s, almost 150 years. I can show you another map real quick. Um, this is the Comancheria. Uh, and what you had is you had a, uh, a Comanche empire uh, in North America uh, at the same time that you have the Spanish Empire, the British Empire, the French, and then later uh, the, the United States. So um, the Comanches were a significant, significant force uh, uh, in what became the United States and especially what became uh, Texas. The Comanche were very powerful in Eastern New Mexico, North and Western Texas, uh, Eastern Oklahoma, uh, into uh, Kansas. So it's kind of mind blowing to think about a native people having an empire in North America for 150 years, because we tend to think of native groups as being easily defeated by uh, Europeans. Well, it wasn't the case uh, when it came to the Comanche, uh, this wasn't the case. The, the Comanche had an empire right smack dab in the middle of North America. Uh, for nearly 150 years. Now, one of the things you might want to mention and, uh, or uh, notice, and I'll take a, uh, I'll point this out um, in, in further lectures. Here's the Comancheria itself, but look at the Comanche raiding zone and how deep the Comanche would raid into what is now Mexico across the Rio Grande, uh, uh, into uh, Coahuila, uh, um, into Chihuahua, but look how far the, the, the Comanches would go. And the reason for that was their access to the horse. And uh, I posted a short documentary on the significance of the horse or uh, to the Comanche. And you might think of the horse as a technology. Okay, so let me get back to my um, basic uh, introduction uh, to, the, to, the, to the Comanche. Um, the, the first group that the Spanish encountered in, in Texas were the Lapan Apache. And the Lapan basically means the Eastern Apache uh, peoples. Uh, the, the Apache in uh, Arizona, they were the Mescalero Apache. Uh, you might have heard of Geronimo, for instance. Uh, they were the Western Apache people. They were more in Arizona, some in New Mexico, but mostly centered uh, in Arizona. What you had in Texas was the Lapan Apache or the Eastern Apache group. And the Lapan Apache were uh, significant. There was there were quite a few encounters, mostly violent, between the Lapan Apache um, and the um, uh, in the Spanish. Um, but in the 1720s, what you have is the Comanche, and uh, you'll be talking about this, you'll be reading about this in Gwen. The Comanche have gained access to the horse. They immediately become a very powerful people. And they start moving, uh, they move first from Colorado into uh, New Mexico. And then by the 1720s, the Comanche start moving in to uh, what's now Texas. And what the Comanche do is they push the Lapan Apache south. The Comanche and the Lapan Apache are deadly enemies. They uh, hate each other. Um, hate's kind of a weak word, but they're just think of their deadly, deadly enemies. 
but the Comanche are much more powerful than the Lapan Apache. And what happens is, uh, beginning in the 1720s and by the mid 1770s, the Comanche have pushed the Lapan Apache south. Uh, um, and, and this is one of the reasons that um, the Spanish encountered the Lapan Apache. Uh, I'll talk about this more in uh, a podcast. Uh, from the Comanche point of view, uh, San Antonio, and I'll go back to the Comancheria here, this is a Comanche territory. From the Comanche point of view, what is now San Antonio, especially downtown San Antonio, was just outside of what they considered their territory. So downtown San Antonio was just outside of what the Comanche considered uh, the Comancheria or their territory. Again, there were no, they didn't have any boundaries. They didn't have any maps that they looked at, but they had an acute sense of the expanse of their territory. Now, as you know, if you're on the main campus, you're about 20, 25 miles from downtown San Antonio. And really the UTSA main campus and uh, uh, kind of beginning with the uh, mall, what's it called? La Cantera, uh, with the mall uh, across 1604, that's the Southern edge of the Comancheria. So this would play a significant role in the 1700s. The Comanche could have destroyed Spanish San Antonio in a day if they'd wanted to. It would, it would have meant nothing to them to destroy San Antonio. They could have done it quite easily. But they don't bother to destroy San Antonio because it's just outside of their territory. Um, whereas, so their, their territory stretched just to what is now San Antonio and the Spanish didn't establish San Antonio where, uh, you know, the original San Antonio, the, where the Alamo is and the missions, the Spanish didn't establish it where it was because they feared the Comanche. The Spanish just basically got lucky, uh, in that the area where they, uh, located, uh, the original San Antonio or the core of San Antonio just happened to be outside of the, of the territory the Comanches considered their own. So the Comancheria basically stretches from La Contera, uh, north and west into Texas, all the way into Santa Fe, uh, eastern Kansas, eastern Oklahoma, southern uh, Colorado. It, it's a massive empire um, within North America. And uh, I can't stress to you enough how powerful the Comanches were and how they dominated this area um, uh, from the 1720s uh, until the 1870s. Uh, Historians now are beginning to understand that the, the, the native groups were not uh, as passive, uh, as weak as we used to think they are. We're beginning to understand really just how powerful uh, they were. The Iroquois in the East Coast, the, 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 the Lakota uh, in, the, in the Dakotas. And this is true of the Comanche as well. So what you have is the Spanish basically have two empires to contend with. They have the French uh, over in Louisiana, but really more importantly, they have the Comanche uh, in in western uh, in the western area or the uh, of what we uh, consider Texas or anyway the area west and north of uh, San Antonio. And the Comanches were much more dangerous to the Spanish than the French ever were. And one of the reasons was is the Comanche would get weapons from the French. They would try, they would uh, um, trade buffalo hides and other kind of deer hides and, and, and pelts uh, to the Spanish for guns. So what we're doing now, what we're shifting to, the topic we're shifting to now uh, in this course uh, is the rise of the Comanche, the arrival of the Comanche in Texas. And I'll show you one more time on this map. Uh, the Comanche come into Texas. They push the, their enemy, the Lapan Apache, south. The Lapan Apache uh, cause a lot of headaches for the Spanish uh, in San Antonio. But so what you have is you have kind of uh, three uh, groups vying for uh, the San Antonio and West area. You've got the Spanish, you've got the Lapan Apache, and above all, uh, you have uh, the Comanche. Uh, 